Good morning, budget fam. It's Jordan from Jordan Budgets. Today we are doing question and answer video while we rearrange our binders. Two points here, I've never done a question and answer. Also, I've never rearranged my binders, at least not this many binders and on film. So good luck to us. I hope we survive. I think we will. I think it's gonna be fun. I got a little over 30 questions and I'm hoping to keep this video under 30 minutes, but I would love to get to everybody. So if I don't get to your question because I don't want, I don't want it to be too long, but if I don't get to your question, I think I will do a second part to this later this week or maybe even the start of next week. So, you know, let's see how it goes. Hey guys, Future Jordan here. I'm just popping back from the end of this video to come back to the front of this video and tell you that I got the idea to do this video from Kathy's Cash and Coin. She is doing a question and answer video this week probably already up if you want to go check it out, but I absolutely adore her. She's also a single mom. She's a solo mom, meaning she has her kids all the time, just like I do. Her channel is so fun and she is so cute and I would absolutely love it if you would go check out her channel, maybe check out her question and answer video, get to know her a little bit, check out some of her other budgeting videos. But I just wanted to come back and say that because I appreciate Kathy so much and I would not have had the idea to even do this type of video if it wasn't for her. All right, back to the video. So there's a lot going on here, right? Let's gonna we're going to take it one binder at a time. So I'm going to sort of take some of these things off and see where we need to start. I think we're going to start with our bills binder. Okay. Let's start, start by just like cleaning off our surface and get into our very first question. Also, just before we get into questions, because I know once I start, I'm just going to be lost in that. And I may not talk about my binders too much, pretty much all of the binders and things that you see in my video, they all come from my shop. You can find that in the description below. Y'all, I can hardly count money and talk. So like good luck, right? Our bills binder is going to be switching to red. Red is now in the shop. I'm so excited. And where is my other bills? Okay. First, we're just gonna change out the labels and then we will stuff it into the new binder. Okay, so first question is a budgeting question. It's from Push. Push asks, could you give advice on how you were able to get a month ahead on your bills? So I get this question a lot. And I actually got one month ahead by saving my stimulus check. I took my stimulus checks, you know, we were all getting, uh, most of us were getting those about a year ago at this point. Honestly, I don't even know when we were getting those. But at that point, I was working a job that I knew I did not like. I did not want to stay there. They were giving me a really hard time about any time I took off for doctor's appointments or sick kids or anything. It was I was being penalized in several different ways. So I was just stashing all of my stimulus check, all of my child credits or anything that we were getting whenever we were getting like those lump sums. Sometimes I was getting like a thousand dollars and stuff for those payouts. So, so instead of spending that money back then, I stashed all of it away and built myself a little bit of a cushion so that I could take off for the summer with my boys as well as get my bills one month ahead. So if you're doing it currently, I would say the best thing to do is to slowly save as you are paying your bills this month. So don't start right away trying to get a month ahead because you're going to stress yourself out. What, what I would do is I would take all of my bills into consideration, add up that lump sum, say it's $1,500, say it's $2,000, add up everything that you need to be one month ahead in all of your bills and start a little sinking fund for that and slowly start stuffing towards that while you pay your current bills. Then once you have enough money saved up, that next month, so say this month I saved enough to be one month ahead for all of my bills. I would start November 1st, so I wouldn't start in October like dipping into that and using it for bills for October. I would start, just save all of it and on November 1st, then pay all of those bills and keep yourself one month ahead. Great question, I do get that question a lot. So I know it is, dang, I should be paying attention. What was that, a preschool, that was preschool. I didn't know which one I just took off. Already I'm lost and confused. Next question is from Esther A. Lou. Any tips and tricks or experiences to share for people doing a budget with a budget binder for the first time? Great point, Esther, I agree with you. It really just depends on what you're wanting to do. I think if I were giving somebody the suggestion to, and they're doing it for the very first time, I would say start with savings challenges and sinking funds. Bills and variable expenses can be hard to lock down at first, so I would start tracking those things for the first couple months, but as far as putting together the actual binder, I would say for that very first month or two, 
I would just start with savings challenges because they're fun. Start saving for bigger needs like maybe Christmas or a big birthday party that comes around once a year. I would start savings challenges for those things and then I would start sinking funds for things like car insurance or, or needing new eyeglasses or maybe a vacation that you have planned. I would start with those two binders and they could even be in one binder. Really just start with you know a handful of things or maybe 10 to 12 things and start trying to save towards that because those will be fun goals that you will want to stuff money in, into. I, at the same time, you should be tracking your fixed, you should be tracking your bills and variable expenses during that time. And then you'll start to see like, oh, if I stop eating out every single night, I'll have money to put into my sinking funds. So it's just, to me, those are the two really more fun binders. And so I would start there just to keep yourself motivated and give yourself something something to work towards and to get your spending in check. Next question is a YouTube question. It's from Brittany Budgets. Brittany asks, how did you grow your YouTube channel so quickly? What has been your favorite part of this style of budgeting? So that's two questions from Brittany Budget. So Brittany, I honestly, I would have to ask you guys what grew my channel so quickly. Um, I'm not sure what has made people want to come or stick around. I really appreciate you, those of you that do, but I'm not sure what really made my channel grow so quickly. I will say that I did, I've always uploaded consistently and whatever that looks like for you, I think that's important to get picked up in the algorithm. So if you upload once a week, stay uploading once a week and keep it consistent. Don't try to upload three videos one week and then not upload for a week and then, you know, something else. I do think that's helped me get picked up but really I can't say too much as to why it has grown as quickly as it has. I'm very, very appreciative, but um, when I figure it out, I would be happy to let you guys know. I am just very happy to be part of this community and I'm just as shocked as you guys are that it's growing so quickly, honestly. I didn't tell my family about it at first because I kind of thought it was just going to be a little hobby that I didn't you know, that was just a little part of my life, but very quickly it grew and I'm so appreciative of that, but I ended up having to tell family and friends pretty quickly because I was busy all the time <laughs> because of um, Etsy and YouTube, both of them. I would be happy to hear from you guys though what you think makes some channels grow more quickly if you have any advice on YouTube. There are some really good YouTube channels that are targeted towards educating all of us on how to grow your channel more quickly and how to make videos and that kind of thing. I tend to watch those channels if I need to learn a new editing like technique or something, but I think some of those websites can be really helpful and I will be happy to share more with you guys as I learn myself, you know. Keely Day said, I love your savings challenges. How long before you sell them separately? Keely, I think you asked this question literally right before I, what am I doing? Guys, if I get these mixed up, someone let me know. I think you asked this Keely right before I put them all up individually. So the savings challenges are up in my shop at this point and they're all listed individually. They were in like little sets and it was kind of confusing to find what you wanted. And a lot of people wanted one, but not all of the other ones and so, I went ahead and listed all of those separate. They are on sale right now. Typically, they're going to be $1.30, but because I just did that in the shop, I listed them at $0.97. Cents. They're 25% off right now, so that is fun. If you're interested in getting those savings challenges individually, please visit my Etsy shop because it is there. So thank you for asking that, Keely. That is a good question. It took me a little bit longer to get those up individually a little longer than I had planned. I think I told you guys I was gonna have them up by Wednesday and then it was up by like Saturday or Sunday. I was just a little late getting some of those up, but they are up now, thank you for asking. If you're looking at this category like, wait, what? Yes, so this will be not a conversation for today, but you know, stuff kinda of hit the fan yesterday. I'm filming this on Tuesday morning. So basically right after I uploaded that Monday video for you guys, like, craziness broke out. So I will be talking about that very soon. So the next question is mom of two asked, how do you start a budget with the cash envelopes? How does Etsy work? Do you regret starting a business there? So I already kind of talked about how I, um, how to start budgeting with cash envelopes. I would love to make a whole video on that, but if I were to just be completely starting from scratch, just the short answer would be to sinking funds and savings challenges. But I think I will make a whole video on how to start 
cash budgeting. I have a similar video already, but it's kind of old. And y'all know my channel's only, it's only a few months old, so it's not like old, old, but every single week I learn a lot on Etsy and YouTube. So there are some older videos from like last month that I would love to update. I get a little bit better in front of the camera every single week too, because I'm just like more used to talking to you guys. I feel so comfortable talking to you guys at this point and it didn't necessarily start out that way. Not that I didn't want to talk with you guys, but you know, when you first turn a camera on and it's just your hands, you're like, oh, what do I, what do I do? You know, <laughs> you're just more quiet and stuff. So, um, the second part of that question was how does Etsy work? Do I regret starting a business there? I would love to do more videos on Etsy and kind of explain the ins and outs of Etsy and things that I've learned. Oh, we're changing this binder to red. But Etsy does have a fee for using the platform. I don't regret starting my business there, but if you watch my video from earlier this week, you will see that I've had some bumps along the way. I've had some challenges with them. I do really love and appreciate the platform. However, if I would have known that YouTube and Etsy were gonna blow up as quickly as they did, I may have just created my own website and saved myself the time. I, my goal for my first month of Etsy, and you will see in my video from earlier this week, I had 400 sales on Etsy the first month. I had a goal of making, I think I wanted to make $80. That was my hope. I was hoping that I would make $80 on Etsy for the first, the first month. And so you guys blew me away by the support and the love that I've received on Etsy and on YouTube because I think when I started Etsy, I maybe like almost had a thousand subscribers. I'm almost at 4,000 now. So again, shocked and so thankful for all of you and all the support I've gotten. Um, but I will say though, yes, if I had to pick a side, I would say yes, I'm happy I started with Etsy and it's been a good platform. I just, y'all know if you saw my last video, they make me a little nervous. Um, so this is the Bills binder now. It's red and we are gonna have red in the shop very soon because I did just get a bulk shipment of that color. Okay, so I had to get the right blue binder. I have empty blue binders because I am listing blue binders in my shop now, so I confused myself. Uh, they are not in the shop just yet, just like the red binders. I just got them in bulk shipment and I haven't listed them yet, but they will be up soon. I, let me see, what is the next question? Without Limits Missouri Prepper, I love her channel. If you have not checked her out yet, please go check her out. She is an amazing prepper. I'm sorry, this is sort of an aside, but she does grocery stockpiles. I absolutely adore her and love her. She is the sweetest. She asked, have you thought about putting any binder sheets on your Etsy? I've bought all of your savings challenges, also with budget sheets. Are you willing to do those in different formats, like the dashboard style, Harley, things like that, and thanks in advance. So. I do want to create budget sheets. However, budget sheets are something that I'm wanting to launch in my actual, I say actual like Etsy's not a shop, but you guys know I want to start a planner business. I want my own website. I want my own line. I want to be the next big planner business. You know, like I have big dreams with that and I am launching hopefully by January, I'm going to be launching my very first launch. So more like specific budget sheets, and different versions of those budget sheets are something that I definitely want to do, but they will be in the planner business that I'm creating. That's gonna be kind of a separate line than Jordan Budgets. It's gonna have like an actual name, not my name. You know, it's gonna be um, a planner line with its own website. So that is something that I'm working on behind the scenes is creating different layouts for my planner business as well as including different budget layouts. And it's gonna be something that I'm hoping you can mix and match and create exactly what you want. I love planner styles that are like that. Um, so yes, it will come. Will it come right at this moment? Not quite, I will get there. And I do appreciate you without limits, Missouri Prepper. You do always purchase from my shop and you are always commenting on my videos and I appreciate you and I love you and I love our chats. She has the cutest kids. Seriously, one of my favorite YouTube channels. Okay, so I am gonna chat about this binder just for a second because I guess we can get into it in another video, but this is my everyday carrying binder. I'm completely changing things up. I don't have my cards in here right now, but this front sheet, I'm gonna have my cards. My passport will be like that. I was using this blue binder, but I just like this a little bit better. And you're gonna have questions about how I'm setting this up, but. We can get into that in another video. Latina Budgets asks, what is your experience starting an Etsy shop? 
what was the game changer and increasing your sales. I did dive into my experience as far as the negative in my last couple videos. There are a couple negatives and it mostly just has to do with them not having a phone number to call if you have an issue. Other than that, it's been all good. They do have a lot of fees, more fees than I think a lot of people want to pay, but not having to set up and run my own website, I adore and love that. <laughs> um, especially when I'm trying to create a website for something completely different. I think for me, it is working as long as they don't completely shut me down for some reason, which you know, if you watched my last video, they did that once. They did apologize and put me back up and said that it was just a glitch on their side. But you know, when that kind of stuff happens to you, it makes you a little bit leery of the platform. There's a couple things I just wish they would get it together with, but you know, I like it. Overall, I like it. And then what was the game changer in increasing my sales? I really don't know. I think that Etsy brings me about half of my traffic and YouTube brings me the other half. If I remember my kind of like my analytics over there. And I think maybe using tags helps me out. My pictures aren't the greatest. I really want to update those and make them like digitally on the computer so they pop out a little bit more. I haven't done that yet, but I do think that being on YouTube and you guys have been so supportive and that has helped. I'm about to put something in this binder that you guys are gonna be like, where did that come from? Just prepare yourselves. It's also something that I'm working on behind the scenes. So you will see. Next question is from Budget With Me Paris V. When do you hope to start your new business that you have been saving for? I hope to start that business in January. It has been falling behind because Etsy has been like booming a little bit more than I thought it would be. And that has been amazing. Also my income changed. So I need Etsy to be booming or else I'm going to be working at KFC. But I do hope to put a bigger emphasis on that in my own time and have it launched by January. So January, I hope to have an undated version because I know people will have already bought their planners for 2022. So I hope to launch undated materials for that first maybe year or maybe until August because people tend to buy stuff again at the start of like a school year and that kind of thing. So maybe in August, I'll launch dated ones. I do want to kind of test the waters with un an undated planner and options in January. So we will see. I'm so, so excited about that. I've been working on it every spare moment I get, which again, is not a ton of time these days, but it it's very fun to think about and like prepare for. Nasiba, Nasiba, I hope I'm saying your name right. I absolutely adore you too. Nasiba, you are always one of my first people to comment, if not the first person to comment every single video. And I love doing the chat with you and I appreciate your support on this platform. Nasiba asks, are you going to ask, are you going to have a Black Friday sale on your Etsy shop or are you gonna do Cyber Monday? I don't know at this point. I probably will at the minimum put all of my savings, all of my um, all of my printable options on some kind of a sale because, um, and or maybe I will launch some new items around that time. As far as my stuff that I print, like I, that I create and then I ship, all of that stuff is really as low as I can get it and still get myself some kind of profit. I don't make a ton of profit on any of that. I consider YouTube and Etsy sort of as a joint dealio. So like, I don't make a ton on Etsy as far as what I get to actually clear. I just feel like with my YouTube and you guys supporting me, I want to make these things for myself, so I also want to create it for you. Now, I do make money. I'm not trying to say that I don't. I just don't know that I could make it much cheaper than I already have it, is I guess sort of the point. So we will see see if I'm able to, to swing that and sort of, you know, what I'm able to do there. Budget with me, Paris V. Let's go back to her for a second because I did not answer her full question. She said, are you and the kids excited to move out of the state? I'm from the UK. What's the best thing about living in the South? I've always loved the idea of living in a small Southern town. We are very excited to move state. I think my kids, my kids are very excited just because they are kids that love change. I know a lot of kids don't love change, but they are excited about it. I also think they're a little too young to grasp all of the differences that will happen, um, but they're very excited. I do love living in the South. I've lived several different places. I don't think I've ever talked about it on this channel, but I've lived in Costa Rica and Nicaragua for about a, a year and a half total of my life. And so I've lived in other countries for a little time. I lived in Utah. I was in Colorado for a very short period of time. And then I came back to Mississippi. Oh, and I was in Hawaii right before I came back to Mississippi for about a year. So I've lived other places. I do love the South. I am a big believer that you kind of make 
everywhere you make everywhere what it is. Every place has its perk. I absolutely adored Utah because it was very family focused. It had a ton of things for families to do. I loved Hawaii because it's Hawaii. It's got the beach and it's got just a kind of a chill vibe. I love living, living in other countries because it was great to meet the different people. And yes, I have loved living in the South because the, the people here are just really friendly. Also kind of a laid back, like chatty vibe. It's, di it's a different laid back vibe than Hawaii for sure, but the people here are just more chatty and, um, you know, friendly in some ways uh, than other places. And, and also, yes, the South does not feel as crowded as other places. It feels nice to ha kind of have some space. And the South is also very cheap comparatively to other places. It has its benefits. I will say, though, the area that you are in, I'm sure, has its benefits too. And there are reasons to really love everywhere that you live, I think, if you are in a developed and free country. I, I may be speaking from a, a place of privilege. Um, you guys may be in an area or a neighborhood that is not the greatest. And I completely respect and can see that viewpoint too. If somebody is to say, well, that's not my experience. I live, you know, in this particular place. I completely respect and understand that viewpoint too. I just, in my own life where I've been, I've really enjoyed everywhere that I've lived. And so it's really hard for me to narrow down exactly where I want to be or stay. I definitely do not think we're going to get through everything. So far we have stuffed our, this is our weekly spending. This is our bills. This is our sinking funds. So I think we just have one more binder to stuff which means we may have to put off some of these questions until another video later this week. All right, so next question is from Kathy's Cash and Coin. Oh my goodness, I love Kathy. He asked, do your boys know about moving? If so, how do they feel about moving? My boys are very excited about the move. I have brought it up with them. I always bring things up with them in a positive way. You know, like, isn't it gonna be so exciting when we get to move and we get to see maybe live by snow or maybe we'll get to live by a really big dinosaur museum. Like maybe we'll get to live by a zoo. I just throw out all these things to them. And I know that wherever we move is gonna have more than what we have here. It's the really the downfall of living in a small area is that there's not a ton of options, um, you know, to get to. So. I pump it up in a way that they're still young enough too that they get really excited about it and they're happy and ready to go right now. I did bring the downside up with them recently though and I said, you know, whenever we move, the only downside is that we're not going to live by Nana and Papa, which is their grandma and grandpa. And and both of them, when I said that, they were like, oh, well, we don't want to move. <laughs> and so they're excited about it. I do think that it's going to hit them a little hard at first, just like all moves do. Even though I'm the one planning the move, I know from experience in moving around that moving can be emotional um, and you have your, your really good and really bad days at first just because change is, I think, naturally difficult for everyone. Even if you like change, like it's hard at first, you know? So they're excited, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I, I think it's gonna be really good overall and I'm thankful that they are only five and seven. I guess by the time we move, they will be almost eight and six. They're still relatively small. Okay, 